Okay, so I'm gonna start with the outline on my paper and I'm gonna take some brown and just start adding some shadow underneath the neck and the paws on my otter. I just use brown, um, make, mixing complementary colors. And using that same brown, I'm gonna start putting in my fur textures, kind of where all those fur um, pieces are gathering because they're wet. Now you'll notice that these fur textures are changing direction across the body of the otter. And that's because we want to communicate that this fur goes all the way around the body and it has form. Um, if they were all the same angle, then it would seem like there is um, no three dimensionality to this otter. I also like to drop in colors to my browns like yellows or reds, just to add a little bit of vibrancy and make sure you take some water and kind of blend these browns out so then they're not um, too chunky. Now I'm gonna start adding water to my otter by mixing a little bit of red with my blue to get a nice dark value. And I wanna make sure that the darkest value of the water is right next to my otter. And then I'll add water as I move away from the otter to communicate a lighter value. Now you'll notice that at the bottom of the uh, first paw here, I put a little bit of brown and that's because I wanna communicate reflection or either that you can maybe see a little bit of the otter body underneath the water. Now, when I do the water at the top of my otter, I wanna make sure I'm using a light value because at the bottom, um, the otter itself would be casting a shadow. Whereas at the top, um, that light is hitting that water differently, so it would be a lighter value. I did do another layer of darker value right where that water meets the body to really communicate that depth and space. Now I'm going back to my otter head, I'm adding some browns, and I'm starting to kind of create the form on my face a little bit. So we're defining kind of the nose or the snout area, the top of the head, and um, start defining the, the shapes. So we're putting in those um, darker values there, and just blend, make sure you take water and blend those colors out because we don't want it to feel too chunky. And then I'm gonna mix a little bit of a darker brown and start putting in the ears on my otter too. Um, after that dries, we're gonna let that dry for a minute. I'm gonna go back to the body. I wanna put smaller, maybe more detailed fur textures in and with all of the blending that we did in the very beginning, we might have lost some of our darker values or the shadows that uh, we wanted to keep to communicate that these little fur hairs are gathering and starting to feel a little bit chunky. I'm taking that dark brown and I'm defining my paws a little bit more, um, putting smaller fur textures near the neck on the paws, and then those hair um, textures get longer as I get further down the body. Now make sure you take your water and blend out too because I want to keep some of the white highlights to communicate form and depth and light, but I don't want to have so much white that it becomes distracting. So really utilize that water, make sure you're blending those colors out so it feels a little bit more full on your otter. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add um, the eyes and the nose. Now you wanna make sure that this area is completely dry before you do this part. We know that watercolor will just go wherever there water, wherever there is water. So make sure that your face is dry before you attempt to start doing your nose and your eyes. Now I switched to my round two because we're doing really detailed area. And after I put in my eyes and the shadows on my nose, I'm gonna take this light gray and start kind of putting in the rest of the nose, the shadows around the eyes a little bit. And I'm gonna blend out that glare within the eye so then that white part is not so white that it becomes distracting. Then taking a little bit of brown, I'm just going to kind of create shadows, a little bit more form on my otter. And then when that is completely dry and it might take some time for that to dry out, I'm gonna to wanna to do some fur textures. So I, I wanna make it clear that yes, there is fur on the body of this otter, but also on the face. So I'm putting some, and you'll notice that those angles change. They're kind of going down near the nose and kind of going on the side of the cheeks a little bit. Make sure you blend out those a little bit so they're not too um, chunky. And then after we do that, I'll just finish up and do my whiskers. Now whiskers are hard, so give yourself a little bit of a break, get a dark value on your brush and kind of light pressure, let them curve a little bit. Um, if you wanna practice on a scrap sheet, that's what I would suggest doing because whiskers are a little bit tricky. But after you put your whiskers in, you are good to go. Good job, you guys.